Okay, just a quick behind the scenes of America's Got Talent. I'm about a half hour to a live show. Nobody's here except the camera crew. Live audience from all across America. This is our desk. This is where Sophia sits. This is where Heidi sits. That's where Terry Crews is. And the show must go on, even amid a pandemic. There's a behind-the-scenes look of America's Got Talent judge, Howie Mandel, on set for season 15. And here to tell us all about how they're safely producing the competition show live is no one other than Howie Mandel himself. Howie, so good to have you on the show today. You must be so thrilled to be back on set. Uh, finalists, as we understand, have been selected for this season, but you all have had to adapt to the pandemic, what has it been like being back on set? Um, different and 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 wonderful, but you know, uh, social distancing is something that I've uh, I've been living with for the last sixty four years, <laughs> and now the world is caught up to me. I, I don't know if anybody <laughs> knows, but I'm I'm a germaphobe, and mm -hmm. this is uh, my uh, nightmare. So uh, I'm thrilled, and I got to tell you, at AGT they have uh, bent over backwards to make it a safe and healthy place. I mean, we are tested um, every other day and we're all separate, even though it looks like we're all together. Um, I don't think anybody is cl the closest I've been to another human being at work is 10 feet. You know, that desk is, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think you can't tell on television that desk is, is incredibly, it's like uh because they're not using it right now. It's like a Las Vegas buffet you know, that they've cleared <laughs> and allowed us to sit and judge from. So I'm not close to anybody. And if anybody aside from uh, Terry, Sophia or Heidi has anything, any interaction with us, they have to approach us with, you know, face masks and gloves and goggles. It's like working on Mars. But <laughs> that being said, the show must go on. And it has been, you know, necessity has been the mother of invention. And we've gone live from Africa and and Asia and Europe and and uh, all over you know America and people live on stage. So and the audience is coming is is being beamed in live. That's a real audience. That mm -hmm. wall that you see behind me, it's not virtual. Well, it is virtual, but it's virtually real. They're all sitting in their homes watching and applauding, and you can hear them laughing and applauding and and booing. Um, but uh, I'm just thrilled that I have a job. Yeah. You know? And I love and that's my favorite job of all. I mean, I love seeing the audience on those screens. It feels like perhaps you can have more of a global audience that's actually watching live. But I imagine the reaction, the energy of an in-person audience might influence how you kind of view the performers, your own judgment. How does the energy now feel having the audience be virtual, sort of in person, but on their screens? Well, until, you know, in the, up until the middle round, you know, first we went on Zoom and we just did the show. Uh, you know, we were doing the show regularly. Then we lost the audience. Uh, and that was kind of weird. It was just in this big, you know, huge space in Pasadena. And it was weird without an audience. And then we were doing it on Zoom. So when this virtual audience came to be, it felt like, oh, we're home. It, I am influenced by, you know, mm -hmm. uh, talent is subjective. And if even if I don't like something, you know, I would never, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of opera, but you know, I, and but I can hear when somebody's on key and on on. To but if the audience is just blown away by something, that does influence me. I go, listen, this is not my cup of tea, but I can tell there's a huge market for this. You're obviously very talented, and everybody is on their feet. So that, mm. that I do miss that live audience uh, in as far as how it helps me make decisions and judge. Well, Howie, even though talent is subjective, I got to say you're pretty talented on TikTok. You've been doing so many of the viral dances. You did the WAP dance, my favorite, the chicken wing dance. How do you decide what you want to do on TikTok? And have you found that to kind of be something you turn to a lot, especially as we're all stuck at home a little bit more right now? Well, I'm fascinated by TikTok and I have, uh, you know, a, a very short attention span and I love to dance. So any place where I can dance or be goofy for uh, 15 seconds and then leave, I'm thrilled to be part of. So TikTok has been a, a great conduit for uh, comedy, fun and just a window onto the world. I, I, I don't know that I totally understand it yet, even though I'm on it. I mean, uh, there was a controversy. People thought I was kidnapped and based on a 
a, a do-it-yourself uh, project that I did. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I'm happy to be part of it. <laughs> and it's at least good for cardio. A lot of those dances are very in intense. Um, speaking of heart health, September, National Cholesterol Education Month. You're keeping busy with filming. You're trying to make sure you're maintaining a heart-healthy lifestyle. What exactly are you doing to achieve that? Well, I, I, my partners and I uh, put together a, a, a website, TakeCholesterolToHeart.com, and I think everybody's got to go there. You'll see beautiful pictures of me and hopefully uh, be informed as to how to take and manage your health a lot better. Uh, I don't know if I've been open about this in the past, but I have high cholesterol, and I was diagnosed uh, like 20 years ago. So, you know, I, I think that people think that, you know, just because somebody is uh, kind of fit looking that they're healthy, but you don't know that you have this silent ticking time bomb inside you. I didn't know what it was, high cholesterol, but I realized that if you don't maintain your cholesterol, it can possibly lead to heart disease and stroke, which is the number one and number two killer of everybody in America. So it, that, that's kind of scary. And then what I didn't realize is, you know, and a lot of people do this, more than 50% of people who know they have high cholesterol and are prescribed maybe a statin will go off of it. And some of those people go off of it without even telling their caregiver. And that's what I did. And then my cholesterol shot through the roof. He was really concerned. I didn't know that there was other options for uh, different statins, different ways of maintaining my cholesterol. So the, you know, I'm just out here trying to inform people. And the first step is go to take cholesterol to heart .com, that you should talk to your caregiver, that there are other options. And that even though you don't feel this and you may feel like you're in shape, I run every day and always have, I eat healthy, I stay active. But I still, mine may be genetic. I don't know why. I, I didn't get to the source of why I have high cholesterol, but I do. And I'm maintaining it. And I can, even in the pandemic, I, I'm doing telehealth. I continue to talk to my caregivers. And, uh, you know, I just want to know. And this is pervasive. A lot of people have this issue. So if it's not you, it's somebody you love mm -hmm. or somebody you know, always uh, maintain a healthy level of cholesterol. Howie, so glad you're we staying healthy. Thank you for shining a light on this issue, and thanks for your time. That's comedian and television personality Howie Mandel. Thanks again.